Hi guys, my name is Natalie Michel, and I'm one of the SIs for Bio 5A for Dr. Ryan Joseph. So let's get into it. So today I'm going to be talking about lecture 9 and 10, which were Fridays and Monday's lectures. So on Friday, we were talking about parts of the cell and three important components of cells is that in every single cell there is three things the plasma membrane the cytoplasm and dna so the plasma membrane is like the phospholipids right here right so we have the hydrophilic heads and the hydrophobic tails so this is what literally makes the border of what is a cell without this there would be no difference in cells and stuff like that so plasma membrane is really important it has to be there in every cell um, it also holds proteins that allows things in and out because the only thing that's allowed to go into the phospholipid bilayer is small non-polar objects but like polar objects like water and stuff like that to get into the cell they need these membranes um, the like the proteins that are in the membranes and cholesterol also changes the fluidity of the cell depending on temperature and different other factors. So cholesterol helps with that. So cytoplasm is the fluid and some structures in the cell. So when you think of cytosol, you think of the fluid portion. So when you're thinking of that like liquidy, like that yellow in the prokaryotes, that is the cytosol. Um, which is water, salts, and organic molecules. Cytoskeleton, you could think of it hold, like a skeleton like in humans. It holds the structure. Um, ribosomes are also in the cytoplasm. They're really important because they're what make proteins. They are the factories, as Dr. Joseph is, says on his slides, and they um, have instructions of how to make proteins. You'll learn this later in Bio 5A. Towards the end of the class, you'll learn about transcription and translation where uh, ribosomes are important. So ribosomes are for protein synthesis, so remember that's key. You'll learn more about it in details later in the quarter. And these are both in prokaryotes and eukaryotes. So ribosomes like are also in every single cell. So our reg regions with DNA. So the third op thing is DNA. DNA is important. You need it in all cells. So depending if the cell is a eukaryote or prokaryote, depends if you have a nucleus that holds the DNA. So prokaryotes don't have a nucleus, but they have this nucleoid region, which is just the DNA gathers up in one region, but there's no boundary dividing it from the rest of the cell. So stuff can kind of go in and out of it. It's not as protected, stuff like that. So it's in an unclosed in unclosed area the nucleus is in eukaryotes and that's the difference between them well one of the many differences, but the big difference uh it has a separate enclosed area that holds dna has another cell membrane boundary remember that so that's a key so dna holds your genetic information stuff like that so it it has that information to say like oh what proteins need to be made all the genetic information's in there, so any like instructions and stuff like that. Okay. So nucleus causes gene expression that is staged differently be between eukaryotes and prokaryotes. The reason behind this is because of this membrane of a nucleus, this is the nucleus membrane, that there is a difference. So because of this, so the DNA has to become this pre-RNA to become this mRNA, and it needs to be this mRNA. If you look closely, if I can zoom in, you see that there's this yellow bit right here. You'll learn a little bit more about these little bits later, but basically I think of it as kind of like the key to come out of the nucleus. So in a eukaryote, you need these yellow little bits right here to be able to come out of the nucleus so then you can be translated by these ribosomes right here and make your polypeptides like that macromolecule we were talking about earlier in class. And with prokaryotes, if you look closely, you don't see any of that yellow. You see the DNA going straight to the mRNA and then just being transcribed from our ribosomes. You don't have that pre-mRNA or anything like that. So if you look, those two pictures are already so different in structures and stuff, so just remember that. So next thing let's talk about that's in the 
cells. Um, in eukaryotes, we have mitochondria. Mitochondria, don't forget, they're double membrane, that's important, and they produce ATP based off cellular respiration. The next few lectures will be about cellular respiration, and this is why it's called the powerhouse of the cell. It's because cellular respiration makes ATP, which is energy, so ATP equals energy, which equals the powerhouse of the cell because energy is power, right? So this formula you'll learn in the next lectures. Uh, glucose, I think of this, so when I think of cellular respiration, this formula, I think of glucose as food because we do ATP, that's why we have mitochondria in our cells, so I think of glucose as food because like sugar, right? Sugars and stuff like carbohydrates, we breathe oxygen, right? So what goes out is water. So I think of like pee, sweat, you can think of that. So I'm just gonna write pee because it's shorter. Plus carbon dioxide we breathe out, right? That's what we breathe out. And then ATP energy, right? So we, we get energy, you know, when we eat a meal, we can then, you know, take a walk, take a hike, do whatever, you know. So that's how I think of that when that formula. Chloroplast are also double membrane important and they perform photosynthesis. So they use sun to make sugar. So they are technically one step full before cellular respiration. So if you look at here, their formula is actually the opposite, the exact opposite. They have carbon dioxide. So if you think of like plants, like when you like take care of a plant, you own a plant, you need CO2, so just basically what's in the air. You need to water your plants, right? Just water, right? And then you need that sunlight. And then why they tell you to plant trees is because they release oxygen and plants make sugars. So later, like earlier with the food, with the cellular respiration, that glucose is a sugar and they can use that later to make cellular respiration because plants also do cellular respiration, but they don't have to eat food to get the energy in the first place. They make it and then they do cellular respiration. So they capture it with solar energy, remember that, and they change it to chemical energy which is the glucose so they can make ATP, okay? So now let's go over the quick summary of lecture 10. So energy can be transformed to different forms. So you learn two forms of energy. You have your potential energy, which is this guy right here, right? So he has, think of it as on the very top, 100% potential energy. Um, so how I think of potential energy, potential is on the top. So this diver has potential of diving. So he's not diving yet, but he might dive. He might not. He's He has the potential. You could think of it like that. And kinetic means movement. And so he's not moving. He's just standing there deciding if he wants to dive or not. So he has, I'm going to do kinetic energy. Let's just do it pink. So he has 0% kinetic energy. And he's on the very top, if you want to think of it like that. So now we're talking about, so this guy, his potential energy is getting converted into potential energy. We'll go back to him mathematically with numbers and all that in a second. And then let's talk about this guy right here. So he already, he has no potential. He already, he already dived. So he has, let's think of it. Let me go back to brown. He has 0% potential, I'm right P. And then he has 100% kinetic because he did all his movement. So, so if you think about it like this, you think of the top as 100% potential, 0% kinetic, and the bottom 0% potential and 100% kinetic. So if you go in between here at the red guy, you can think of it as 50% kinetic and then 50% potential. You'll learn more about this in the Physics 2 series, um, but that's a quick summary of that. Kinetic energy, potential energy, potential is potentially moving, and kinetic means movement. So if you like to use the diver and stuff like that. So also with this one right here, you can maybe think that she is maybe 25% potential, 75 kinetic, just depending on where the line occurs, right? So if you want to think of it as a line here, so 100% potential up here, 0% potential over here, vice versa, you can do that with kinetic and all that type of stuff.
So let's talk about the laws of thermodynamics. So we have two laws that are important. So energy cannot be created or destroyed. Energy is constant. So if you know some potential, there was no adding everything equal to 100. It was either 100 and 0 or 0 to 100 or 50, 50 or 25 to 75. So nothing gets lost or created. So when you're, eat some, when you're eating food and you're getting that energy, the energy was, was um, from something else, from the grass, that's the energy they made. So nothing gets lost. It gets lost as heat, but technically the same amount is staying. You'll learn a little bit more about that later in your biology career. So you can talk about energy and heat and all that in the physics series and beyond in bio. So like changing from potential to kinetic, right? What we talked about earlier with the divers. So conservation of energy, right? That's, that's also a key. That they also call it the law of conservation of energy, but energy is conserved. So second law of thermodynamics is that there's always an increase in disorder or enthalpy, right? So basically less usable energy. So this is what I was talking about heat, like disorganized heat. So a lot of energy that is made gets lost as heat. Like for example, if you start a car, most of the gas that you're using is getting released as heat. So if you touch your car that was running, it's warm. Um, so basically a lot of the gas that you're putting in your car is getting wasted as heat, not really to be used to drive, sadly. But that's a good example of that. So useful energy decreases, that's also important too, because most energy gets lost as heat. That's also a key on that. Okay, metabolism is the chemical reaction in cells. So there's two types of chemical reactions, it's catabolic reactions and anabolic reactions. So when I think of catabolic reactions, I think of cat and I think of break. I think cats break things. Um, if you've ever seen cats knock things over, I think of that. Antibi antibiotic reactions, I just think of the opposite. It's the build reaction. One has to break, one has to build. So that's how I think of it. Metabolic pathways start like this. So this is the start of cellular restoration and photosynthesis section of this class. So this is important to know that, that reactions break. Like you have to break the sugars to produce that ATP, or you need to, you know, to build sugars in photosynthesis, you need to you know, build things up, you know, you need to take the water and you need to take the sunlight and all that type of stuff. So you'll learn more in details about that later, but that's building on to that stuff. So there's different types of um, intergonic reactions that releases energies. So we have extragonic that releases energy, uh, which is the delta G negative. So when you're releasing energy, I think like you're giving energy. So you're technically losing energy because you're giving it away. That's how I think of it. So the products have less energy, right? Uh, than the reactants. So you'll see that because energy was released into the system. You have to remember how it's being said. If you're saying it's being released into the system or stuff like that, it could be the opposite. Energy was, was added to the system. It's also that's inorganic, but technically it's the same thing. It depends on how you're saying it. You'll, you'll see questions on it. So remember that these are spontaneous, but spontaneous doesn't mean fast. It could occur slowly. So just remember that it's key. It's negative, releases energy, extragonic. Okay. So we have indragonic, which I'm just going to actually highlight. Let's do it in green. So Indragonic is when the delta G is positive and it absorbs energy. So it's the opposite. The products have more energy than the reactants. That means there's an input into the system and these are non-spontaneous. So you are giving energy, you're absorbing energy, you need that energy, right? So you're putting in the system. So this is like, I guess you can think of like me eating food or you eating food that you're putting energy in. So later maybe you can put energy out, right? Okay. So here we're talking about enzymes, which is really important. So enzymes are known for lowering, let's change the color, lowering activation energy. Okay. So they are known as catalyst. They speed reactions without being consumed by the reaction and they don't alter the reactions or products and they do not change the delta G, okay? But they lower the activation energy, okay? So let's say 
the black line, I'm gonna color it. So this is the original path, right? Without an enzyme, you have this black all here. And then when I want an enzyme, let's just do it in red, like it was red, right? But if you look at it here, the reactants and the product, no matter how I drew it, they're still the same start to finish line. It's just, I like to think of systems as lazy. So when you do this, you're just being, I'm just thinking of the enzyme being really lazy and it's just like, you know what? I don't want to go up this big hill. Let's just go down a smaller hill. We're just going to go the same place, but we're going to just put less work. So that's how I think of it. So enzymes are just making it easier to get to your end product. They're making the journey easier. It's still the same destination, that type of stuff. So that's a summary on enzymes. So here's a summary slides of lecture nine. So lecture nine, we talked about parts of the cell. So the nucleus, genetic info store, ribosomes, just translation to make proteins, endomembrane systems are the macromolecules synthesized, modified, and transported. So things get in and out of the cell, not just the membrane, but like you make something in the cell and now you want to take it out and put it maybe in a different cell or something like that. Vacuoles are water and ion storage. Mitochondria is cellular respiration, so that makes energy and photosynthesis um, is in the chloroplast. Uh, metabolism is broken down pathways and steps. Catabolism means breaking down, so you're releasing energy. Anabolism is building and you're requiring energy. Exergonic is delta G is negative, is less than zero, spontaneous. Indergonic is delta G is greater than zero, it's positive, which is non-spontaneous. Living systems are open. I think of the, like the human body, you have to eat and then you release what you ate and it's keep going. You can't just stop eating and you're gonna expect to be living after a while, right? You're going to not live. So living systems are open. You have to constantly have things in and out, in and out, in and out. Enzymes lower the energy, the, the energy of activation. So basically just lowers the activation rate. Um, it needs optimal conditions too, depending on what the enzyme works, where is the enzyme based, all that type of stuff. And it has to be regulated, can be regulated. So that you can't just throw always enzymes in, you know, you need to level it out. What's the perfect amount, stuff like that. So um, that's my summary on lectures nine and 10. Uh, good luck on your midterm. Hopefully this helped you out and I'll see you guys in the future. Bye.